Host, I'm so excited to have the beautiful, genius, amazing, uh, super smart Mu Ying Chen. She is, <laughs> she, seriously, I, I can't say enough amazing things about you because you truly are. Um, you graduated from UC Berkeley and now you are a uh, Microsoft software engineer. Okay, guys, that's, it's really no, not much higher you can go, really. Um, as somebody who's this young and this beautiful, it's amazing how you agree to even do this. So thank you so much. So, um, well, I have so many questions to ask you. So like, is it possible to be a woman and a software engineer at the same time? Uh, yes, as, absolutely. And also, first of all, thanks so much for having me, Lee. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to just talk about my experience and also inspire other people who want to do the same thing as me. And to answer a question, I feel like, like I, th I, for me, I feel like anyone can do anything if they just put their mind to doing that. And I think like anything that's worthwhile is going to worth a fight. So, and I am a firm believer that your beliefs will really dictate your actions. So like, if you're a woman and you want to be a software engineer, you have to, first of all, believe in yourself, and then you're going to take the action to achieve what you want to achieve. And like, in your journey, I think people will probably like doubt you or you might even doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. But like, that's not a reason to give up if that's something that you want to achieve. So yes, it is possible to be a woman and a software engineer at the same time. My mind is blown. Like it's just shattered. Like little piece <laughs> on the floor right now. So like, do you hear any sort of pushback? Like you know, were you were you always like you know, were you raised by your parents to think, yeah, I can do anything I want to do? Or did you hear any pushback from your family or friends or like you know, classmates at all? Well, I mean, I like growing up. I'm like very stubborn mm -hmm. like if i really want to do something i would sacrifice everything to yeah. achieve that and like i'm my personality is kind of like very assertive as well and like like when i was like in elementary school like i was the one that like bullied all the guys in my school so i'm, I'm not like like how i bully i mean Guys at that age are like stupid, right? They would do anything to like yeah. get the attention from girls. Yeah. So what did you do to them? So I mean, I just I I mean, not I don't actually bully them, but like I would like make like punch them to, and then like when they want to get my it. attention. Yeah. I love it. You so punch like, them and then what? And then what? You just punch I mean, them. And they do it's just like want. me, like growing up. I'm Are just like. Huh, yeah, <laughs> I'm still single. <laughs> you might not be by the end of this podcast. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> so like I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not very like very very feminine. So like, so but for me it's like girl, it doesn't matter. Oh well, okay, thanks. <laughs> but I just like when I see like oh software engineer, even though like the stereotype is like oh it's just all guys like right. wearing glasses and coding all day. It right. doesn't mean that I don't wear glasses and not like I can't do it. So that's my mindset. Interesting. So like, did you ever feel like you, uh, I mean, when did you decide to be a software engineer? Were you like 10 years old or like, you know, deciding? Well, yeah. So like growing up, I'm like always good at math and science and like I'm not very good at like history or geography or um useless. like like yeah, you're yeah. Like, you're I, <laughs> it's not useless i think uh, humanities are very important subjects that everyone should study and understand but like for me i i like being technical with what i do as a career so like when i go to college i was considering like uh, engineering as a whole and then like i narrowed down to like oh do i want to be electrical engineer or do i want to be civil or do i want to be uh, chemical engineer or do I want to be software engineer and then like I take like chemistry classes or like physics or circuit class circuit classes or, or try to understand them and then like like those didn't really work out like I can do them it's just like I don't see myself doing it right, right. as a career and then like coding was something that was more interesting and something that clicked with me so okay. maybe I'll just do it yeah I love that. So, like, when you were studying at any point, 
um i mean obviously very resilient you made it to the top so like how do you deal with like bugs and problems and setbacks in general like how do you do setbacks in general i think i would like like try to understand what is wrong mm -hmm. first like if you don't understand what's wrong you're not going to solve it uh and then once you like know what's wrong and then you're gonna like plan on how to improve it or how to solve it and then yeah. maybe you have to be patient yeah. and then i think being a software engineer you have to be like very patient as well because like sometimes like debugging takes longer than mm -hmm. building what you're doing uh as yeah. well so if right. you don't have the patience you're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, be frustrated with yourself a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. I know I could never be a software engineer because if I encounter the slightest thing that's not in my way, I just throw the computer out the window. So I, feel like <laughs> I could just never do that. So thank well, God. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> thank God for people like you. Holy shit. Um. So okay. So what is it like working where you are right now? Like, what is it like working as a woman in technology? Um. I. So obviously, there are still not a lot of women so to study. What proportion, like, like, yeah, in the class, like, how many people are like like you? I I want to say a class is like one in four students. Wow, that's pretty intense. And like at work, like it depends on like your company, like how big your company is, like yeah. how big your team is. Like sometimes, like I know people that are. Or is the only woman in their team in her team? Wow! And you just, uh, currently, yeah, like well, you had your pickings, right? Like you could have like just picked anyone, right? Dating wise in school, right? Uh, well, I mean, when you have like a proportion that favors you, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a yes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, yeah. but it, it's it's you know, woman in tech. Is, is still minority, uh, but I think more and more companies are more aware of the issues and they uh, try to emphasize on diversity and inclusion in their hiring. And uh, I honestly personally have never felt like people in my team like just discriminate against me just because I'm a woman. I've never personally experienced that. Um, but I think like it's sometimes Sometimes it's definitely um, a little bit intimidating and discouraging when you're like the only woman in your class or in your team or even in leadership positions because in leadership in leadership positions, women are is still like the minority. So why do you think so, that is? Like, yeah. Sorry, what was your question? Why do you think that is? Why do you think there's so few women who go into a software engineering? I can't speak for other people, yeah. mm -hmm. but I think the perception is, I think women are just intimidated by the fact that they are the minority, so they don't want to go into that. You it's feel, not that they're, they're, they're not good at it. Do you feel like you were welcome when you were in class and in the workplace, you, or do you feel like people try to help you extra because you're a woman, or you feel like it's kind of neutral? To me, I feel it's neutral because, like, like I said, I've never like received any comments about me being a woman mm -hmm. in my class or in my work. Mm -hmm. The only experience that I had was like, it, it, in university, I was working as a network engineer. Mm -hmm. So like, I go to like the building, to the cabling room, cable room, and then like I configure them and then like set up the work for the building and then like I was working and then one of the women older woman she walked by me and she was like oh uh do you work here is that is what you do it looks technical mm -hmm. and then like in my mind I was like like oh shit like I can't do this just because I'm a woman but I'm just like but then I said it to her I was just like oh yeah I'm, I'm doing this is what I do and she's like oh cool and then she walked away so like okay I think mm -hmm maybe like there's still microaggressions if that's the right word to use 
maybe like people have opinions about you, but that yeah. shouldn't discourage you. It just depends on how you deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, what do you love about what you do? That's a good question. I think I just like thinking critically and analytically. And like, I like that I am constantly thinking, I'm constantly learning at my work. And also my work is like pretty flexible. I can just work from home if I want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what so. What is it like working at Microsoft? Like, tell us a little bit about that. It's very chill. Like everyone's chill and it's not, like I've not experienced the tech bro c culture. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's this thing that they're, like, the best, and then they just don't want to, like, talk to you. I like, that. I have not experienced that. That's perfect. It makes Maybe, sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Company. yeah, I mean, of course, yeah. it's, like, top-notch. So, like, can you walk us through a day in your life? Like, so, from the morning, what do you do? Uh, what do you do in the afternoon? And then what do you do at night? What's a day in the life like for you? So, I would wake up and then, like, commute to work. My commute is pretty long. It's, like, 45 minutes. Uh, try to get to work before 10 mm -hmm. and then I would check emails and reply them if I have to and then I would if I have meetings or one-on-one -on -one, I would go to go to that mm -hmm. and after that I would plan my day or usually I should I plan my day before my day starts so planning something well is like getting it half done already yeah totally so I agree. Uh, after I've planned that I would uh block out the time in my calendar. Like for example, 11 to 12, I should work on this or I should read this as a task. And then like, I do that. And then like from one to two, I should work on this. So I block out my time and then I will work on uh, what I promised myself to do during that time. Um, and then that's usually my morning. Uh, and then I would go to lunch and then I would come back keep working on things that I have to work on, uh, on the calendar. And then when I feel tired, I would go for a walk or I would get some coffee and I keep working. And then if I have meetings, I would go to that right now. I'll just keep working until my day ends. Mm -hmm. And then I would usually either go home or go work out. Awesome. What do you do yeah. for fun? So, well, so I live in Seattle currently. Mm -hmm. The weather is like really bad. Mm -hmm. so, but like when the weather is good, I like uh, hiking, I like camping, and I also am trying uh, hip hop dancing. Nice. I don't know. Oh my God, do you have videos? I want to see some videos. No, no. <laughs> I am still. Some? I'm. I'm still learning, huh? Can you record some for me later? I. You know, if I am, <laughs> uh, like, I might. Uh, if I am like good enough, I'll. I, definitely record and send it to you i'm sure so so, so you can share it and maybe like someone would dm me <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh you're so hilarious um i do want to see it though um but only if you feel comfortable because i'm like i feel like i have zero self-awareness and that's why i share everything because i don't know if i'm good or bad and i also don't care so that's why i share everything for me but a normal person would probably feel a little bit like oh my god i shouldn't do that I like that. You're very like <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm like very like 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 insecure about myself when I'm dancing. I'm like standing like behind everyone. <laughs> Just hope that no one sees yeah. me. Hip -hop, hip hop is so hard because it's like the good people are so good that I know. Even and they stand good. Yeah, and they stand in the front and you can't you can't see yourself but themselves dancing. <laughs> so you feel even worse about yourself. So true, yeah. Okay, I won't I won't I won't harass you about this. Okay. So, um, <laughs> like, how did you get into Microsoft? Like, what's the interviewing processing like? Like, could you, what, how is it different from, like, other companies that you've interviewed for? Um, so, I, like, most of the big companies, I don't think they do anything different. Like, they would, like, go to school or go to conferences, and then mm -hmm. they try to hire people that way. So, for me, I went to a diversity conference. So, like, a conference that focused on diversity mm -hmm. in tech. So I went and they sent me an email for a first round interview. So I went mm -hmm. and I guess that went well. So they sent me to a final round interview to uh, the headquarters up in Washington. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So when I also went through the entire final round in the real process, and I guess I did well, they liked me, so they gave me an offer. Nice. So, how so that's how. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Like, congrats. Wow. So how long oh, did that you. process from beginning to end? So, okay. So I actually started as an intern. So uh, I think uh, why in the fall semester, I went to the conference to do all the interview. And then like in the fall semester, I finished the interview and got the offer in fall. And then in the summer, I would start the internship. And usually if you do well in the internship, you get a return offer. Was that like a few months? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so summer internship is like three months for me. Three months yeah. So like, okay, that's awesome. Nice. So um, what advice would you have for people who are starting out software engineering who want a job starting out? Like what, what advice would you give to them? Just like they want to have like starting their career? Yeah. Um, I was like in terms of looking for the job or in terms of just everything like being oh, okay i th i think the most important thing is to be proactive mm -hmm. um so like you, like even if you have like great grades or great projects great extracurriculars if you don't tell the recruiters that like no nobody's gonna know this right so you, if you really, really want something, you have to go take the actions to achieve it. So you would want to go to all the on-campus events that this company have if they go to your school. And if they don't go to your school, you would want to go onto LinkedIn and find the recruiter of that company and just, just DM them like, as much as you can and, or email them and keep reminding them that they should look at your resume. Mm -hmm. And remind them that how good you are to, or what skills that you would bring to the company. Mm -hmm. Because like otherwise, there's so many, um, so many applicants for one job nowadays that it's very hard for you to stand out. So can I write? Be proactive. Okay, can I write? Yeah. You know how fucking awesome I am. I'm Lee fucking Lin, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I would, I, would, I would not use the, the oh, class yeah. words, but yeah. But the rest is okay, right? But, but you that's know a, I'm that's Lin, a, right? Just as a <laughs> uh, that's why. But I, that's the right. The, that's the right attitude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. So thank you for that. All right. Now I, ha I feel one step closer to Microsoft because of you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so you. yeah. Seriously. So okay. Let's switch gears. Let's go to hatred. What do you? Okay, mate. Okay. Okay. You okay this question? So if you don't feel okay answering, that's fine too. What do you hate about what you do? Oh, <laughs> I just hate my commute, honestly. <laughs> I mean, that's, you can just buy a helicopter with a salary that Microsoft pays you, right? Okay. Uh, I'd probably buy like a piece of a helicopter. <laughs> That'd be cool, right? There should be a Uber uh, yeah. for helicopters, I feel like. I hope that's a thing because that really saves time. Because like, I personally hate wasting time and I feel like commuting is like one of the biggest waste of time in my life right now yeah yeah so hmm, that's yeah it's not that's awesome then you pretty much love your job okay so my question next is there's all these like crazy boot camps that are popping up and you know people say oh you know four years of school in your opinion do you think you really need school or boot camp to become a software engineer uh you know i think if like i said like it, i i believe that if you really believe in yourself you would take the actions to achieve it mm -hmm. but um and i and i noticed that like a lot more companies don't require um like a university degree mm -hmm. for you to apply anymore are they out of their minds are they not chinese companies what do you think are they i i mean i i think <laughs> it's a trend it's a trend that like people just like learn how to code on their own and then they become good mm -hmm. if they put in the time and then I think companies realize that like that's the trend and also like going to the boot camp graduate and then get a job out of the boot camp is also a trend mm -hmm. but like for me what I have seen is that for big companies 
-hmm. the people who are in senior leadership positions mm -hmm. they most of them still have like four year university degrees mm -hmm. right even from like a prestigious university or so right? like i don't think a lot of them still come from like a non traditional background right mm -hmm. so, but I think in the future it might change, or it might not. I don't know how that would work mm -hmm. when they pick who is going to represent the companies. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a, a, a trend that you may not need school or boot camp to be a software engineer. But mm -hmm. I think like having a university degree or uh, even a boot camp, be a boot camp graduate would give you more opportunity and be m more noticeable than people that don't. I love that. Thank you for that thorough response. I appreciate it. So um, uh, if you had to like do over everything in your career, would you do over anything at all or just do the same thing? Um, I think one thing that I would like do over again is like to be more confident and be less insecure about myself. Mm -hmm. I can't like, do it's, any. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Because, like, I feel like imposter syndrome, if you have heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I feel it too. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I, yeah. I, just, I felt that, like, when I first started my career, I felt that, like, every single day. I was like, fuck. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And everyone seems like they know what they're doing and they're very good at it. And, like, I am sitting here looking, like, very stupid. And, like, maybe they'll judge me because, like, I'm dumb or whatever. But then, like, as I, like, work... Mm -hmm. After a while, I just like re like realize that like nobody really actually knows what they're doing. Mm. Like, that. like maybe they know what they're working on, but they don't know what other people are working on. Because oh. like a lot of times, I ask this person, "Oh, do you know what this other person is doing?" And this person is like, "Hell no." <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. and also like, not just women, but also like just like everyone in general experience like imposter syndrome and they at, at some point of their career right so i become more acceptable yeah. of that and like just tell myself that don't compare yourself with other people and just just have the right mindset and the right attitude and just focus on what you want to do and mm -hmm. and i think it will get you there yeah totally thank you for that great you're so good at explaining things i wish you could <laughs> teach me how to do C plus and all the whatever languages? I have no idea what the languages are, but who cares? You know, you know what? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the cool language is, but anyways. So how how do you keep up with like industry information? Like, what do you read? Uh so I go. To, I read. Um, so like for the news like channel, there's like a section for like tech news. Sometimes I read that and. Uh, I would subscribe to like some newsletter that uh, send me the news every morning. So I would read that. Um, and also I would uh, go, go to conferences because like that's where they usually give out tech talks about what's the latest technology or latest trend in the industry. Mm -hmm. And if, you, uh, if your company is like really big, sometimes like they would host tech talks in the company to like ask this engineer or this manager to talk about what they're working on. Mm -hmm. And also like, I think most importantly is like the internet nowadays has all the information that you need to learn basically anything. Like on YouTube or on podcasts, people always talk about like what they do uh, or how they get there. And also there's articles to explain like technology and there's also like online courses where people teach you the latest uh, hot technology so like there's so many ways for you to keep up and like for me I feel like if you just keep saying that you don't know certain things like it's your own problem like you, it's, you're just too lazy to like even look it up yourself on the internet okay. if that makes sense it does absolutely so okay let's let's go to the other side who should not become a programmer huh I feel like it's definitely people who can't code. Uh, like, obviously, I think if you want to code, you should try. But then if you, if you try it and like, it doesn't work out for you, mm -hmm. that, like, you shouldn't force yourself to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also people that don't like 
change in their industry because mm-hmm. like tech as an industry is constantly yeah. changing yeah. and like you don't have to learn all the new things but you kind of have to like just have an idea of what's going on and if you're the type of person that don't like this kind of change in your environment maybe you shouldn't do that mm-hmm. um That's and good. also like yeah also people people that just can't communicate because hmm. like I mean, we have an example of a bad communicator it's just like I mean, I think everyone has a stereotype of like engineer, software engineers just like sitting in front of the desk all day, blah, blah, blah. But then like sometimes when you go to someone and ask them a question, like mm-hmm. they don't give you the right answer. What does that mean? It's, it's like you ask them something, mm-hmm. but they, they answer the answers that they give you don't really answer your question. What is it? So like they don't know how to answer, or they no, they just stop? don't. They don't know how to answer it correctly. Okay, <laughs> okay. I I think I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, so it it's like when people that just can't really communicate with people that frustrates me because that makes sense. kind yeah. of like wasting everyone's time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. I do have a question going circling back further. So you say people who can't code. So like for, and I'm sure you're going to be a manager pretty soon, like in the future, you're going to. Um, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> right? But it's like, how can you tell somebody who's just starting out programming versus somebody who's just flat out can't code? Like at what point would you say, okay, this person can't code versus, okay, maybe they just need some time. Like how would you make the, how many classes should they fail before they give up? I guess that's my question. Huh. I mean, so if you go to university, um, they will have the fundamental classes that you should take before you take the advanced courses, mm-hmm. like any other engineering major. So I feel like if you can't even like pass the fundamental courses, mm-hmm. like even if you try really hard, I think that's a sign mm-hmm. that tells you like, oh, maybe you should do something else. Because like if you don't even understand the fundamentals, like right, the yeah. advanced topics are, it's not going to make sense for you. For sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean that applies for every major too, right? You gotta have to understand the fundamentals. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good sign. So okay. So what are your tips on becoming a better software engineer or more productive at work? Um. So, I mean, I'm still pretty new, but I feel like the first, uh, what, uh first is to I guess understand the problem mm-hmm. before you actually start doing it. Because, like I said earlier, like planning is planning well is like getting it half done, right? And like a lot of times, people are like when they see something a problem, they just start coding without thinking like how to solve it first. Mm-hmm. So like you will want, I think, to be more productive. You will want to think about what to do, like maybe even write down the steps on how to do it, and then go do it. That because that that would be easier for you to go back and make changes because you can re. Refer to what you your plan, and then go back to a uh, revise uh, instead of like reading the code you just wrote, which uh, most of the time would be garbage. <laughs> yeah. Then um, and also, um, write documentation, like explain mm-hmm. your code. Documentation is like an explanation of how your code work. Mm-hmm. So you would want to explain how it works in term in the ter- in words that if you go back to read it you will understand mm, I so love that. Mm-hmm. you because like if you if you create a project and for people to use it like you probably will become someone that would have to maintain and uh, develop it further so having a good documentation not only helps people to understand but also help you to just re- uh, go back to review and then revise later Mm. Um, also become more if effective in communication like I said earlier I feel like like you spent so many hours in front of a computer that you might not be very comfortable with talking right. to people mm-hmm. but you I mean at work you really have to talk to people to explain um, your your ideas or just talk to your managers uh, in general, and you, if you don't have a good communication skills, 
mm-hmm. I don't think your career will go very far. Yeah, I love that. That's a great explanation. So, like, percentage wise, like, how much time do you spend communicating people with people versus like doing the code, like in your job right now? I I want to say like like eighty percent or twenty percent would be communicating. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. So I, I appreciate you saying that. That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you and I think like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I think lastly, like, I think you should have a growth mindset, meaning that yes. mm-hmm. you'll be, you will be willing to learn um, anything that you need to do your job well. Um, it's not really um, like being an engineer. I don't think it's really about like what you already know. It's about uh, the, how to think critically and like learning how to learn mm-hmm. and i think like those two skills are what will and communication with is what would take you further in your career absolutely so i love that you're just so you're such a systematic thinker i love it it's just, it's just <laughs> thank you. you seriously okay cool and then like oh i forgot you're also a minority sorry um so what are your tips on advancing and owning your career like as a woman and as a minority um that's a great question because i've been thinking about it a lot mm-hmm. just because from the podcast that i've been listening to and the oh. meetings that i've been going to mm-hmm. i feel like you as a woman mm-hmm. have to be your own advocate mm. and what i what i mean is that you really have to you're the you're the builder of your own career and like if you want a promotion or you want a raise, uh, race, given what you have accomplished, just bring it up to your manager or a, man- uh, a peer level management. Mm-hmm. Like, do you, do you watch Shark Tank? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. So one of the sharks, like she, she owns a company, she owns her own companies and have female employees. She was like, uh, I have uh, men and women employees in my career and the female employees just don't ask for raise. Like they just don't. Same. That's what she said. And then like, that just got me thinking like, oh, I think I have definitely experienced uh, this uh, currently as well. Cause like, um, I think I've, last month I was having conversations with a few coworkers and um, it was like mostly guys, but they're like, oh, one of my friends is asking for a promotion, even though he only started after, uh, for two months. And then I was there like thinking like, oh, I feel like I should not start asking until I, I'm a year into my position. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, and then I'm, I'm not sure if it's true, but like men just like to put in 50% of their work and then take 100% of the credit, but women just do the opposite. Right. So, so, like, we really have to, like, be our own advocate and just ask for things that we deserve. Mm-hmm. And don't be, don't be shy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, um, what encourages you to, like, keep going despite obstacles? I, I, I think in the future, I want to be a role model for someone Mm-hmm. Um, who wants to be a, a woman in tech so I like even though it's hard I want to keep pushing myself mm-hmm. to become uh, eventually become someone that other women could look up to in the future mm-hmm. so that's Super what nice. keeps me going I uh, look to you holy shit you <laughs> so much in your life because like we graduated from the same school and you're way younger than me but you've achieved so much more so Oh, thank you so much. I'm still trying. I, I think you have accomplished a lot too. But in the weird it's, it's, areas, in the weird areas. I feel like you're more traditionally, you know what I mean? Like just conventionally yeah, yeah. anybody who meets you are gonna be of course she's successful. She's you know, she's a Microsoft software engineer. She's reached the top, you know what I mean? But mine's just kind of yeah. weird shit. Um but anyways. Um, it's so weird shit. You challenge yourself a little okay. bit, but okay, we'll, we'll have a conversation. This conversation, <laughs> okay. So, what do you advise for new female software engineers in general, or like new minority engineers, or any anybody kind of like not in the norm? AKA, uh, okay. but you know what I mean, like quote unquote yeah, yeah. norm. Yes, I 
I really think that at the beginning of your career, a good manager is more important than a good company. Hmm. Uh, so if you could, you would want to pick the manager, the managers that are willing to guide you mm-hmm. and give you the opportunities for you to grow further um, at, 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 uh, at the beginning of your career. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you should also hold yourself accountable and make sure that you're meeting or exceeding the expectations to get to the next level of your career. Like I said before, like you're the builder of your own career. Um, you, you, you need to speak up for yourself um, if you have to. And also be proactive. And uh, to, I think being a woman in tech, like to stand out, you really have to do do things that other people don't do and also like solve other people's problems or think about what values that you could bring to a team or a company that is beyond your job responsibilities Mm -hmm. and also just challenge yourself professionally and personally every day and do that until you're very good at it i love that so um all right now we switch to the parts where it's uh the funny uh parts of it. i don't know why we put it to the end but whatever it's all good so who do you find funny besides you and me if it's even humanly possible who's number three huh. i well i does that have to be someone that i know this is anyway, like comedians or like anybody you find funny i i like i really like neil patrick harris oh yeah, I really like him. Awesome. Like he's, he's Barney, right? From uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. He's hilarious. I love him. Yeah, I mean, I personally don't know anyone that's funnier than me in real life. Yeah, so it's it's hard for me to answer. <laughs> yeah, it's not possible to be funny. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's possible to be funnier than him. That's great. So, okay, so any other advice before we share with other people how to work with you, how to stalk you? Any other advice? Because you said a lot, so I don't know even know if you have, because it's, it's a lot. It's I, I, it would be, be like you, just don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> yeah, 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 I love it. You're the first guest to actually say that, I love you. So, okay, so now how can we work with you? How can we uh, find out? Uh, yeah, uh, you can reach out on LinkedIn. Uh, my LinkedIn because are my readers oh. are illiterate and stupid. Oh okay. Oh sorry. I should I should <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> so um, my, my profile would be LinkedIn.com slash i n slash m u y i n g c h e n. Awesome. So that's where we can find you. Holy shit! Thank you so much. You you've raised the smartness level of this podcast by like a thousand percent. Oh, Even thank you. Good questions can bring you down. So thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate this. I hope to have you on future episodes to come. You were amazing. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. Uh, seriously, the honor was all mine. Thank you.